information theory proves mathematically that physical interactions can't create new information by themselves. And this is simply common sense. Because scientists, since the time of Einstein, have agreed that information is not actually physical. The medium that holds the information is physical. But the information itself is not physical because it doesn't have mass or length or temperature or any other physical property. Information is measured in bits and bytes, which is a measure of the amount of knowledge that the information gives us. So since one can't describe information in purely physical terms, it's not possible to explain how information appears by any physical process. That means there must be another cause for the information in human society. So, living creatures, and especially human beings, constantly create artificial objects and information, whereas matter by itself can't do this. This means that living creatures are not just physical systems. They must exert some non-physical influence. Well, that makes sense, because it's in the nature of living creatures always to strive to go beyond the limits and boundaries set by the natural laws. Plants grow upwards against the force of gravity. Frogs, fishes and animals jump. Insects and birds fly. And human beings try to defeat the physical laws in every way they can. Actually, all living beings are outlaws because we always try to escape the natural laws and live beyond them. And ironically, the greatest outlaws of all are the material scientists. For one thing, they help the rest of society to escape from the limitations of the natural physical laws. Besides that, when scientists investigate natural physical laws, they have to stand outside the laws and oppose them. The philosopher and scientist Michael Polanyi pointed out that in order to investigate gravity with a pendulum, Galileo had to oppose gravity to lift the pendulum bob. And in order to drop weights from the leaning tower of Pisa, he first had to climb up the tower. Similarly, to investigate electromagnetism, scientists have to separate electrical charges or magnetic poles. And to investigate the forces in the atom, they have to oppose the forces to break the atoms apart. Purposeful activity is specifically designed to oppose physical interactions. Now the question arises, who is the actual agent who performs purposeful activity? We say, I did that. But who's the I? It's not just the physical body, because physical bodies don't perform activities when they're asleep or dead. We don't do anything when we're unconscious. We only act 
when we're conscious. It's self-evident that the body doesn't act by itself. It is I, the conscious self, who performs activities through the body. But what is consciousness? The Vedic wisdom tradition points out that the conscious I is distinct from the inert material body. It has a completely different nature. We remember, I was five years old, I was ten years old, and so on. The world around us changes. Our body changes. Our mind changes. Even our personality changes. But our I-ness, the fact that we exist as conscious individuals, remains the same. We keep the same name, the same passport, and the same identity number throughout our lives. The fundamental nature of matter is to change, whereas the I-ness of the conscious self doesn't change. That means that the conscious self is not matter. In Bhagavad Gita, which is a brief summary of the whole of the Vedic wisdom tradition, Krishna explains to Arjuna, the body changes from childhood to youth to old age, but the conscious being within the body doesn't change. Nobel laureate Sir John Eccles is a brain surgeon who's given experimental evidence that the conscious self is a non-physical entity that interacts with the body through the brain. The medical journal Lancet reported that 12% of patients who were revived after they had apparently died from a heart attack had seen what was happening in the operating theater even though they were clinically dead at the time and some of them were even physically blind. This shows that consciousness is distinct from the body although it has a close relationship with the body and it acts through the body. The body is like a machine and the brain is like a computer. So who operates them? That's the conscious self. Now, machines and computers not only have an operator, they must have a manufacturer as well. Why is that? Because physical interactions can't create vehicles and computers by themselves. It's the same with the body. Physical interactions don't create bodies, they break them down. What happens when a living creature dies? The body immediately begins to decay. That's the physical laws acting. 